welcome to The Real Deal, bringing you the latest news, reviews and so much more from the world of film here at the Clapham Picture House. On this week's show, a trippy detective story with a stellar cast. Ewan McGregor stars in an Aussie gangster flick. And a boy and his robot buddy set out to save the world. Now, first up is a psychedelic film described only as a surf noir, whatever that means. <laughs> Who knows what that means? Basically, it stars Joaquin Phoenix, Josh Brolin and Owen Wilson. But before we find out more, here's a clip. If it's a quiet night out at the beach and your ex-old lady suddenly out of nowhere shows up with a story about her current billionaire land developer boyfriend, and his wife and her boyfriend in a plot to kidnap the billionaire and throw him in a loony bin. I need your help, Doc. Maybe you should just look the other way. So joining us now, we have the wonderful Kassam Luch. Thanks for coming back. Now you and I have both seen this film and I think we're kind of on the same track with it, but tell us a little bit about what we can expect from I'd love advice. to try and tell you exactly what it's about. <laughs> mm. I have no idea myself. Yeah. But I mean, a trippy thriller set in the 70s, I guess, is the best way of describing it. The main draw for me was the director, um, Paul Thomas Anderson, who's done The Master, and There Will Be Blood Beforehand. Yeah, it's brilliant. And it stars Joaquin Phoenix. And what I think is great about this film is that Paul Thomas Anderson manages to bring out the best performances, in my mind, from, um, from Joaquin mm. Phoenix. I think in The Master, he was just phenomenal. And uh, PTA, as we like to call him, um, knows how to showcase that. Um, I don't, it, particularly with his shots that are very close up on his face, extreme close up shots, which just linger there. Mm. And you're watching every single emotion go through the eyes, which I suppose from an actor's point of view is, is pretty textbook in what you want to see. Yeah, I mean, it is very much about his face for the most part. That is the main character, Joaquin Phoenix's character that you follow throughout the film. The rest of it doesn't make much sense to me. And yeah. It's weird that PTA, as he is known to his friends, <laughs> yeah. has said himself that the film isn't meant to make much sense, which is a bit of a problem when you're trying to watch something for three hours. You want mm. something to have a narrative that you can follow. Yeah. Well, obviously, Whacking Phoenix um, gets the best performances out of him. Apart from that, what's good about it? Um, Josh Brolin is also in it and he's a fantastic, he's one of my favourite actors yeah, yeah, he's definitely. great in this as well, he always brings it and he brings out a great performance, he's got some great lines in this. I have to say across the board all the performances are brilliant in this, they're mm. all very character driven, it's, it's lots of small conversations which is good and bad in parts but we have Reese Witherspoon in it, we mm. have Benicio Del Toro, we have Martin Short, we have, oh who else do we Owen have in Wilson. there, Owen Wilson, yeah, there are so many great actors in mm. this film which make it collectively very very good or something that you will really want to go and see however there well, are problems well it's it's like on the face of it that sounds great but I mean remember the counselor an all-star yeah. cast doesn't necessarily equal a great film now a film that defies description and also that the director himself says can't be described sounds like pretentious claptrap to me <laughs> is it <laughs> there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and a lot mm. of smoke given the 70s uh, drug setting if okay. you get the okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah i've been thinking okay. about that one for a while but yeah all the ingredients don't add up to much in this and you know th there are things that come in and go out of the film one of the characters in the film is actually just a figment of his imagination but that's never it explained it's which never makes explained. it really complicated and when you have so many characters coming in and coming out you really struggle to to follow the narrative which i think is a big problem of this film but also a, a, it's something that maybe Paul Thomas Anderson wanted us to feel because you mm. just don't know where, if you're coming or going which is quite like the trip that he's putting us on. Yeah I mean film. the source novel is apparently very similar in style to the film which yeah. in that case makes it an authentic adaptation mm. which is great but if you're not a fan of that style then it's a bit of a problem. Yeah. What really really works well mm. as well in this is the style in its, uh, in, in its look and right. feel. 70s music carries it throughout, which mm. is brilliant. And then also we have the grainy cinematography, which instead of it looking like a glossy 1970s take, mm. it actually looks like it was filmed during the time in parts. So to me, I mean, it sounds great in parts, but ultimately kind of frustrating. Um, what's the real deal? It's an authentic 1970s take on a genre that really don't, doesn't get seen much. I don't think it's one for everyone though, and it's three hours long as well, which is worth remembering. Yeah, yeah, well, just under three just hours. Just under three hours. Yeah, 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 and I think if you, I think I would give it a recommendation because I know that there is a lot of Paul Thomas Anderson fans out there who will appreciate what it is, but if mm. you are a regular Joe, as, <laughs> as you are, who might be going to the cinema, you might be sold by all the great marketing of it. It's got mm. some amazing posters and stuff that are really selling this film, mm. but when you get into it, it's a bit of a slog. So for me, I think it's a three-star film. 
Three stars? Three stars. Could well something a little bit different there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, ever since Eric Banner sliced off his ears in one particularly uh, gr gruesome Australian film, a lot of the other Aussie crime dramas have a lot to live up to. So does the brand new thriller starring Ewan McGregor and the omnipresent Alicia Vikander fill those big boots? Before we find out more about Son of a Gun, here's a clip. There's no margin for error. No half measures. This is all or nothing. So that's the trailer for Son of a Gun and joining me now as well as with Kassam is the lovely Roxy Simons. Uh, Roxy, thank you for being here on The Real Deal. Guys, tell me a little bit about Son of a Gun and what you guys thought. So Son of a Gun is about a character called JR played by Brenton Thwaites and he joined, he, he's he got his prison sentence. It's a very short one, he's a very young guy. And he uh, quickly realises that in order to survive through prison you need protection. Right. And he gets the attention of Ewan McGregor who then employs him to break him out of prison when once he's finished his prison sentence. And basically they all both work together in a heist film, in a heist afterwards. Oh, I love a good heist movie. I think, you know, they're always exciting, lots of fun. Was this exciting well, the fun? the trailer <laughs> makes it look like one of those, you know, high octane action films. It makes it look like Heat and, you know, the start of Dark Knight as well, yeah. which I thought the music kind of reminded me of that as well. Um, it doesn't add up to that at all though. Oh, There's no, no it, it's kind of, one of those sweaty Australian thrillers that are <laughs> quite commonplace right now. After the Rover from last yeah. year and, yeah. you know, like you mentioned, Chopper and Mad Max was the original one. It's got that vibe to it, which I think is great. Yeah. And the performances are quite good as well. Although Ewan McGregor is doing an accent that neither of us could figure out what it was. It, it's yeah. not Australian. It's not his usual His multicultural bro. accent. Yeah, I think yes. it's his transatlantic <laughs> 20 years flying around all over the place accent. Oh, that's yeah. a shame because I really rate Ewan McGregor. I think we should see a lot more of him on our screens. He's had a mm. bit of a hiatus of late. Um, so, uh, talk about the style, you know, we see a lot of that in the trailer, you say it's not quite living up to that, but what does it actually do? Well, you, you've got the prison sequences at the start, which I think um, are, are quite good, and then you've got the uh, breakout, which is a you know a great escape sequence, and then the heist itself, and then, you know, you kind of see the characters on screen for a lot more doing very little. Ah, oh, so yeah. tension. <laughs> yeah, it's true, they just do a lot of sitting around and talking, and it's kind of loses its intensity. I think it just the film lost its focus. It was much better in the prison, I thought, because it was just very intense chemistry between Brenton yep. Thwaites and Ewan McGregor, and I loved that part of the film. But once it went out, I just... And is that just, just a small won. fraction of the film that we see with yeah, that intensity? Yeah, it's, it's not very long. Okay, so that's a shame, really. Um, audiences at home who might be thinking, you know, sounds like I've seen the trailer, it looks quite good. One for the general public, or is it a specific audience that have to go and watch this? I think I, I think there is something for everyone in there. Or, um, and if you're going in wanting to see Ewan McGregor, like you say, he's, he is very charismatic on screen, which again, he is in this film as well. Um, it, it's worth watching on that basis, but you're not going to get the film you expect from the trailer, I'll yeah. say that much. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of, it's a fun, action-packed film, but you won't get very much out of it. Is it a throwaway film? Is very it? much so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I watched it very recently. I can't remember much more than what you said. So. <laughs> it's all right, we'll keep this short, guys. <laughs> Is there anything else that you think that people at home, they should be aware of with this film? Uh, I do think that there's a bit of an uh, unnecessary romance element in it. Okay, I tell just, me more. <laughs> well, I don't even remember how it started. It was just... It's, it's the, the female character played by Alicia Vikander, yeah. who we've spoken about before, because yeah. she's in pretty much every film yeah, at the moment Yeah, she's really, anyway. really up and coming. So she's, yeah. And I think I really rate her as well. I think she's a great actress. She's picking some very clever roles at the moment. So yeah. I'd be intrigued to see why this doesn't quite work. This isn't one of her clever roles. Right. She basically yeah. plays the female love interest who is introduced just to add a little bit of tension, but not really. Wait, yeah, oh, which is so work. annoying, because it's always problematic when a film does that, because it's like they haven't got enough to fill it, mm. so they just shove in a love story yeah. at the same time. So frustrating. I saw I went, really, you decided to go for the romance. You didn't need it. Oh, no. Yeah. OK, guys, we've heard that it's probably, I know where we're going to go with this, but what is the real deal on Son of a Gun? Uh, Son of a Gun is a Australian thriller, which we kind of wanted a lot more from, but we didn't get what we expected. <laughs> and how many stars would you give it? I'd probably give it three stars. Okay. Yep. And does this do justice to Australian filmmaking at the moment? Probably not. It's not <laughs> as good as some of the other films that we mentioned, like Chopper and, and you know even The Rover, which I really enjoyed last yeah. year. So 
This isn't one of the better ones, but it's, it's not bad. Okay, cool. So there we go. That's our review of Son of a Gun for the moment. Uh, coming up next is a Disney take on a comic book. Let's have a look at a clip. Oh, what's wrong with you? Low battery. You home, sweetie? We jumped out a window. Who's that? We jumped out a window. So, that's a clip of Big Hero 6, a boy and his robot set off to save the world. Um, we're joined here by Kassam Leach. Kassam, is it as nice as it sounds? You made it sound very nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lovely warm film, isn't it? Um, it is the new Disney film. It is um, centred around a, new, a city that they've created called San Francisco, which is meant to be a combination <laughs> of San Francisco and, and Tokyo. Tokyo. That's clever. Yeah, OK. Yeah, it's like very like hard it. to say as well, so I had to concentrate really hard there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's about a boy and his um, brother's robot, actually, yeah. um, who's a healthcare robot. And they kind of set off to try and solve a mystery. Um, and they, the big hero six, the number six, comes from five other characters who also become superheroes and join them on the quest. Oh, it sounds lovely. Sounds a bit complicated. No! <laughs> well, they, 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 this is my issue with the film. There's a lot going on yeah. in there. So you've got this city, you've got this slightly futuristic setting, you've got this main robot, mm. and you've got these five very different superheroes with different superhero powers. So it's a lot to take in. Um, but it's done in the Disney style, which is... Uh, um, so sometimes we have those great animations like Toy Story, which are enjoyed by kids and adults mm -hmm. alike. And then you have things like Planes, which I think is very much for a younger audience. Uh, <laughs> where does this? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, where does this kind of sit in? Now this is very much in the ilk of the Toy Story films. I mean, Good. it's based okay. on a Marvel comic, a you know very little known Marvel comic, which you know hardly anyone knows of. So they've taken that and they've decided to make the first animated film, um, which is a Disney Marvel crossover. Um, and it's and it works. It works as a superhero film, uh, and it works as a Disney film as well. Good. So on that basis, it you know it, it's a very enjoyable, watchable film. The only problem I have is, like I said, there's a lot going on in there, and I, it feels that at moments like there's too much. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask because if it is quite complex and there's a lot going on, um, who's it aimed at? What age group really? I, you know, the comic book fans are the ones who are going to get the most out of mm. it because it, it, it plays with references to other superhero characters and there's a character in there who's desperate to become one of the team and he kind of comes up with the most outrageous characters and it's kind of mm. like wish fulfillment in that uh, aspect. Um, the kids are going to have plenty to look at, so even if they can't follow it, they're going to be able to watch and, you know, the main robot uh, called Baymax is such a kind of huggable, lovable, big... Um, it's, I've, it's I've seen so many photos of journalists hugging Baymax. I've done the hug. <laughs> I've done the hug. We've all done the hug. It's based on actual technology, so it's an inflatable robot um, which you can uh, touch and hold, and you know that that's it looks like that as well, yeah. which is great. Do you know what it reminds me of? And this had a profound impact on my entire life. Um, short Circuit. Right. Yes. So Johnny it, Five. <laughs> is, is it is it um, sh like Short Circuit for for this generation? Is it that similar sort of impact? No, I like that is actually quite a good reference. It does mm. have that kind of vibe of a, a robot who is. I mean, he doesn't want to be alive in it. He's quite self-aware, but mm. um, that kind of relationship between the human characters and the robot is very genuine, and that is the thing that most people take mm. away from it. Now, there's been in recent years a load of animated films that mm. have come out, and I would say quite only a few really stick, like the Toy Stories, the Frozen's. Is this one? that is going to stick with audiences that people are going to come back and love and want to keep in their DVD home entertainment collections? Yeah, I think everyone's going to want the toys and, the, you know, and not in a plain sort of way. They're actually going to want the toys, not <laughs> yeah. just have it forced upon them. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's quite as good as the Toy Stories or the Frozens because those are kind of classics which I can imagine being played every single year. Yep. This one probably will grow, so there almost certainly will be sequels and more in the franchise, and you might get more out of it in that way. Um, but yeah. Cool. So give us the real deal on this film. Real deal is um, this is the latest Disney animation. It kind of lives up to the previous ones. Not quite as good as the classics, but certainly by no means a misfire. I give it four out of five. Oh, nice. Four out of five. So who'd have thought it in a week with star-studded trippy thrillers and a Ewan McGregor crime thriller, Aladdin is robot. <laughs> Still the show. <laughs> Love that. Kazam, thank you so much Cheers, for man. joining us again. <laughs> and also thanks to Roxy too. <laughs> So that's it for today's show. And as always, if you want to get more film news, reviews, and a whole load of everything else, check out The Real Deal on film.com. And if you want to chat to us on Twitter, it's at The Real Film Show. Thanks for watching.